Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, I've already made a demonstration video for this. This is the uh, Mission Impossible Security Module uh, that includes sound detection and laser breach detection. Uh, if you haven't seen the full demonstration video, please check out my channel for it. I'll do a brief demonstration after we put it together. Um, I'm going to show you piece by piece how to put it together. I'm going to tell you right now what comes with it. Got your 12-volt uh, siren. Uh, custom PCB, 5 volt relay, two two pin terminal blocks, 7805 5 volt re regulator, uh, push button, uh, 1N4001 uh, diode, a, an LDR, light dependent resistor, four 0.1 uh, uh, microfarad ceramic capacitors, eight 3 millimeter red LEDs, uh, a 2N2222 transistor, um, six 10k ohm resistors, a 1k ohm resistor, a 100k ohm resistor, and a 470 ohm resistor, uh, an LM324 quad op amp IC, no socket, a, an 18 pin dip socket, a uh, PIC18 program microcontroller, a uh, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a miniature electro microphone, and a 50 K ohm potentiometer. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where to solder all of the resistors, and then we'll do the capacitors. So again, we've got six 10 K ohm resistors, a 1 K, a 100 K, and a 470 ohm resistor, and then a 50 K potentiometer. So let's go through it. Each resistor has its own uh, number, and it's got its own value on it. For instance, R3, 470 R. So that's obviously your 470 ohm resistor. R2 is 10 K. R13 is 10K. Uh, this is labeled gain, and this is where you place your potentiometer. Uh, R1 is 100K. R15 is 1K. R1 is 1K is 10K. R12 is 10K. R11 is 10K, and R17 is 10K. So place those in. Uh, make sure you put the right values in the right places. There's no polarity for resistors, so it doesn't matter which way you place them in. Now, for your potentiometer, you'll notice that on the footprint, there's a screw head. There's also a screw head from the bird's eye view on the potentiometer. Make sure that when you place the potentiometer in, that it's flush with the board and that the uh, screw is facing the screw on the, uh, on the printed circuit board. Uh, and yeah, so that's easy enough to do. Make sure that the potentiometer is flush to the board. Once we're done that, we'll do our capacitors and our diodes. First, let's worry about our capacitors. C2 right here is labeled C210U for 10 micro, 10 microfarad. That's your electrolytic slot. Now, on your electrolytic capacitor, there's a short lead and a long lead. Your long lead is positive, your short lead is negative. On the footprint, on the left-hand side, there's a very small plus sign positive symbol. Make sure that your long lead goes in the left and your short lead goes in the right. If you turn that around, you might pop it when you you might pop the capacitor when you turn the power on. Your four uh, 10 microfarad 10 uh, 0, sorry 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors go in the C1, C5, C4 and C3 slots. Now they are not polarized. They're both leads of the same size. It doesn't matter which way you place it in. There's no polarity. So solder those into place. Next, you've got your diodes. You've got your three millimeter red LEDs and your one in four zero zero one diode. So on the on the, the the single diode, there's a white side. You might have trouble seeing it, and then there's a black side. On the footprint, there is a little uh, white spot on the bottom of the footprint right here, D1. And then uh, so you want to make sure that the white side of the diode is facing the bottom of the PCB from this perspective and the black side is facing the top. Solder that in place. Next you've got your LEDs uh, and they all go into the slots here. So RB7, RB6, RB5, RB4, RB3, RB2, RB1, and RB0. Now the lo there's a long lead on the diode on the LEDs and a short lead. Long lead is the same as the electrolytic. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. All diodes negative side are on the right and the positives are on the left. So in the case of the RB7 diode, place your long lead on the left, short lead on the right. Uh, for RB6, sh uh, long lead on the left, short lead on the right. Short or long lead on the left, short lead on the right. They're all the positives on the left, long leads on the left, all 
short leads on the right from this perspective. Now so make sure that those are flush with the board when you saw them into place. After we do that, we will do our socket and our terminal blocks. Okay, so first of all, terminal blocks. Uh, you've got two two-pin terminal blocks. Make sure that the terminals are facing outwards because there's a plastic side and there is a side with two terminal blocks. Make sure that in both cases the terminals face outwards. Solder them into place. Uh, 7805 5 volt regulator has a side with writing on it, the front side, and it's got a back side that just has metal on it. Make sure that the uh, metal side is facing the back and that the side with the black side with the writing on it is facing the terminal block. Solder those into place. Next you've got your, your single monetary push button switch. Place it in the, right here in the SEL cell for select uh, footprint. It only fits in one way and it should pop right into place and when you solder in, make sure it's flush to the board. Again, your other terminal block here, terminals facing out, not facing where the relay is going to be going. Now we've got our single socket, our 18-pin socket. Place it in the IC2 slot label, IC2, pick 18F1220. Make sure that the notch on the left-hand side faces the notch on the board. It might be difficult for you to see from that perspective. There is a notch on the footprint. From a bird's eye view, make sure they line up. Because when you actually place your microcontroller, in there, there is a notch on the left hand side of the microcontroller and that has to face left from this perspective. If you turn it around and you power it up, you'll fry your circuit. So be very, very careful. Very, very, very careful. So solder those into place. Next we will do our LDR, our transistor, our uh, LM324 and our microphone. The LM324 does not come with the sockets. So you have to be extra extra careful there is a notch on the left hand side of the LM324 the LM324 has four as a um, is a 14 pin tip chip on this the uh, board the footprint is labeled LM324N and there is a notch on the left hand side make sure that the notch on the chip is facing the notch on the left hand side so that aside um, you've got your LDR when you place your LDR in this slot it's labeled LDR make sure it's flush with the board and uh, then you've got your 2N222 transistor. Your 2N222 transistor goes in right here. It's labeled 2N222. Now, there's a flat side and a curved side from a bird's eye view of the 2N2222. As you can see on the footprint, there's a flat side and a curved side. Make sure that you line up the flat side to the flat side from a bird's eye view and a curved side to the curved side. Now, the microphone. The microphone is placed here, and there is a mic plus a mic plus lead and a mic minus lead. You want to make sure that the negative goes in the negative and the positive goes in the positive. Now how you can tell is, you can't see it from here, but underneath the mic, there's a side with a green piece of glitter. The side with the lead closest to the side with the green piece of glitter is your negative. So you want to make sure that it goes in the mic minus slot. And then the side with, with no white or green piece of glitter goes in the mic plus uh, area. So solder that all into place. Be very, very careful. No shorts. And then last but not least, we will do our uh, relay. We will do our LED enable, which doesn't have a component, but we'll get to that next. And we'll plug in our siren and we'll test it. Your 5-volt relay goes in the K1 slot right here. It only fits in one way. Make sure you have a nice strong connection on all five points. Last but not least, there are two pads here for LED enable. If you don't solder those, the LEDs will not function. The circuit will function as is, but you won't be able to see what's going on. Uh, so what you have to do is take take a, an extra lead off of one of the resist like like the excess leads that you have flying around from all the other components and just short those two leads. Once we're done that, we're ready to we're ready to uh, to test it. I've done two things here. Uh, what I've done is I've taken the siren and there is a red wire and a red and black wire. The red wire is, is your positive. Your red and black wire is your negative. Now, on the left, right most terminal block here, there are two pins, and they are labeled S plus and S minus. S plus is for the red wire. S minus is for the red and black wire. So, otherwise, if you turn that around, your, your siren will not work. Now, I've also placed nine... I've got, on my power uh, terminal block, there's V plus and G and D for ground. Uh, v plus is is uh, 9 volts, uh, 7 to 9 volts, and GND is ground for DC ground. So what you do when you power it on the first time, you uh, 
you basically you can just make a whole lot of noise. Hello, hello, hello. Now that's when this is calibration time. You should really only have to do this once. But this is essentially in case you don't want to use the uh, the audio detection part of this kit, and you just want to use the laser. You can turn the gain down so that none like none of these LEDs light up. Depending even if you scream, hello, 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 or you can turn the sensitivity up. If you turn the uh, potentiometer left, hello, 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 and as you can see, I'm turning the gain up. Hello, hello, hello. Now this will come into place next. If I turn it right, I can turn the gain way, way down, so I can essentially disable the audio detection part of it. Now once I set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to to run through the audio detection test. I've got it so that, hello, hello, that's pretty good. I've got all of the LEDs lighting up uh, when I'm making a lot of noise. Now I can set this, when I, ha when I set the system up, I can make it so that uh, extremely quiet noises will set it off or extremely loud noises will set it off so I'm going to uh, I'm going to set this off using the audio portion of it then we'll test the laser portion of it but remember by default it's always searching for the laser portion and the uh, and the audio portion and the laser portion is extremely sensitive so even when it's running if I if I push cast a shadow over the LDR the act the, the uh, circuit the siren will activate so anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the cell button all the LEDs will flash. Now what I have to do is I have to hold the cell button and I let go when I get to the sensitivity I want. If I want extreme, like, like absolutely no noise, like very, 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 very quiet noise to set it off, I will leave the LED lit up at, uh, here. If I want medium noise to set it off, I'll leave it here. If I want extremely, like, like a loud noise to set it off, I'll leave it up here. So I'll set it up so that it's very, very quiet and then I'm going to set it off. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to hold the button so it scrolls through all of them, and then once it gets here, and if you don't let go, it goes back to the RB0, which is the most sensitive. So I'm going to scroll it through to show you how it works, all the way through. And I'm going to set it off. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I actually said hi. Now what you have to do is you actually have to hold the cell button while that's happening in order to disable it, either to turn power off or hold the cell button until and let go while the LEDs are off. Because you see they blink as, an, uh, as a visual indicator uh, and then they stop blinking. And while it's not blinking, press uh, let go of the cell button and it should turn off. So now I'm going to set it so that the sensitivity is very high and I'm going to cast a shadow over the LDR circuit. Now I've got a laser, I'm going to show you how to use uh, how to use a laser for it. It's extremely sensitive and I've designed it specifically so that it's extremely sensitive. So I'm going to set it to so I can actually talk to the lowest sensitivity and then I'm just going to cast a shadow over the LDR by using my hand just to show you how sensitive it is. And then lastly uh, I'm going to uh, use a laser. So let's try this again. I'm going to press the cell button because it resets and I'll set it to high. So now I can talk. I'm not going to talk really loudly, but I'm going to talk. Right now if I made a clap or a really loud sound, it would turn it on. Um, so right now I'm just going to cast my shadow over the uh, the LDR. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm actually going to put my hand on the siren because it's extremely loud and I'm going to show you how I turn on, how I turn it off by holding the cell button. So ready? So remember, when it's flashing like that, you have to let go, press the cell button and let go when the flashing LEDs turn off. So now I'm going to turn it off, turn, I'm going to turn the video off and I'm going to put a laser on the LDR. So now I've got a laser pointed at the LDR. Now remember, once you set this, if you set it to extremely uh, low, high sensitivity for audio, or anything breaches the laser, anything, while well, it's active, even if you breach the laser extremely quickly, the alarm will go off. Now there's my laser. Of course, you can have this ascending, uh, you can have it across the room. The LDR circuit is set up to detect any light changes, immediate t changes in the light and it sends a pulse to an internal ADC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, set it up to 
uh, low sensitivity because I want to be able to talk while I'm while I'm uh, doing the demonstration. So I'm going to use a screwdriver to activate it. And I'm going to make it really fast just to show you how sensitive it is. There you go. So that's the Mission Impossible Security Module. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll uh, check out our store. This is ha actually one of my favorite projects that I've ever come up with. Uh, and I've got a lot more coming, so check us out in the next few months. We're updating, and uh, I'm, I've got a ton of new DIY kits and modules for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time.